Hey folks, Kevin here. Well, it's February 18th, 2022, and uh, and I've gotten some comments and questions about the uh, Optimus Maximus. That's our new tractor that I featured in a couple of snowblowing uh, videos recently. So this is a Kubota Grand L6060. So far, I absolutely love it, and it's been fantastic. And one of the questions that I got was, well, what did it cost you? So what I thought I'd do is take you through to the Kubota website. I will tell you at the end of this just how much we did pay for the, for the tractor. But uh, my goal is always to share with you the, the step process. So we'll go to KubotaUSA.com and, uh, and we'll look at uh, what it, wh how to build the tractor online. So you know you have information available to you when it comes time to go to the dealership and all. I also want to just mention that uh, the, all of these purchases that I made in 2021, uh, I wasn't planning on making all of those purchases in 2021. It was um, it was the result of um, multiple factors coming together, especially with the pandemic, the pressures of the pandemic, the chip shortages, the steel shortages, the shipping issues, the issues with the um, energy and plastics. All of those things I could foresee prices going up pretty significantly and I'm not certain that the prices will come down anytime soon as well. Uh, also the, I realized that the availability of getting this equipment would be very difficult and the resale value of the equipment that I already had was was pretty pretty good as well. Uh, I had actually started researching uh, each you know the excavator the track loader the the tractor uh, the, the Grand L6060 a few years ago and I looked at the different models and we'll take a quick look at that as well on on the website I also researched the different manufacturers uh, and uh, and I ended up choosing to go with Kubota and I can always answer questions about these topics in the future as well um, you know certainly we all have our have our our reasons for selecting uh, a, a manufacturer something that is very important is the dealership and the service center where you're getting uh, getting the equipment one of the things that held me back from purchasing the Kubota tractors previously was the number of dealerships that were in our local area uh, as I assess them they fail to meet my minimum requirements as far as communication costs uh, of uh, serviceability uh, the uh, staff knowledge all of those sorts of things so without any further ado let's just well, I've got my uh, Google Chrome browser here so I'm just going to type in Kubota K-U-B-O-T-A USA and hit enter and it brings up uh, www.kubota.usa.com so I'm just going to click on that link and it brings you to and of course if you're in Canada it'd be <laughs> Kubota uh, CA I think um, I'm not positive but you know whichever country you're in you want to go about uh, searching for it, it, it for your co country so Kubota sells all different pieces of equipment tractors mowers utility vehicles construction equipment big hay and farm equipment all sorts of equipment and all and uh, and what I was searching for is the tractors and you can see there are a whole variety of the subcompact which are the BX series and then they had the B01 <coughs> series which is the mini me that's Thea's tractor the B2601 then they have the next um, uh, series up is the LX series and then they have the standard L series and then the grand L series these are all considered uh, compact tractors uh, the grand L series uh, the grand L 60 series is really more of a deluxe uh, tractor and it my stage in life my health and what and I make an investment for years to come that's why I chose the grand L 60 series um, 
they also have on this place uh, find a dealer so I'm gonna click on find a dealer for just a second here and uh, you can put in your zip code one mine is one three one two six hit search and you'll see the ones and where they're located and the place that I ended up going was 45 miles away from our home and it's John S Blazy Incorporated and you can you know uh, you know click on their information about them and uh, you can contact them you can go to their website you can find out more about them it's a family run operation they've been in business for 75 years uh, the grandson of John S Blazy is the one junior he's the one that uh, that I've been dealing with and his dad also his it's a father and son operation at this point as well so uh, it's really important to find uh, a deal and service center that's that's really important so now I'm just going back to the tractors here and uh, and here we have the BX series I'm gonna go ahead and click to the right here I guess and oh that's subcompact so I'm clicking on compact tractors the B01 series which is the mini me that's another tractor we can go through its build at some point in time the LX uh, series <clears throat> which is in between the B and the L series a, a little bit uh, multiple different functions here I, I should say this yeah, my main advice to anyone who's looking f to purchase a tractor an excavator a track loader a whatever it is one of the things I would I would suggest is what what are the utilities what are the functions that you want that piece of equipment to perform and then look at your terrain and and all and and you know and for some people uh, if it's really wet ground or you've got lots of hard work to do you may want to get a, a track loader before you get a, tra uh, a tractor it really depends on the functions and the and the the, the functionality of the piece piece of equipment so all uh, I would sit down and really list everything that you want the tractor to be able to do even if you can't afford uh, those attachments right off the bat I would think about all of those things first so we're gonna go to the right here and here we got the standard L series then we get to the grand L60 series now to the right of this there is the uh, L60 limited edition series now when you're talking about uh, cars and off you're getting a limited edition uh, Trans Am that usually means that there's extra features that are that that there's a limited run on so it's really special it might have uh, more value in the future whereas with tractors uh, when they do it or at least with Kubota tractors when they do the limited edition series it means that they're really taking away a few features to make it more affordable and I think that's a really valuable thing because uh, like one of the things that came with my Grand L60 series is cruise control and cruise control would really be an awesome thing if I was out uh, brush hogging all day or or uh, raking hay all day with a piece of equipment uh, you may want to just set the the cruise control and that way you don't have your have to have your foot on the hydrostatic tr transmission pedal and as you go over bumps it doesn't uh, change the rate at which you're driving so I think having the cruise control would be a very valuable feature for most people but I'll be doing either snow blowing work or front end loader work or it'll be running a wood chipper uh, you know it'll be using a, um, a grapple on the front of it so a whole bunch of things like these these are the, are the features that I would need and in the LE series it has a, a couple of modifications to the three-point hitch which you know uh, a few bucks more uh, and, and and if you wanted the cruise control a few bucks more for that for that uh, switch the wiring's already there and uh, you can save yourself quite a bit of money depending on the features but we're gonna go ahead and explore the Grand L60 series because that's what I purchased now as a base price a manufacturer suggested retail price and, and as far as I know uh, tractor dealers aren't really pumping that price up too much at least they didn't do it at uh, Blazy's in Palmyra New York where I bought my tractors uh, 
I have seen in local dealers around here, even before the pandemic, they were bumping up the price. They're making you pay a premium to get the, get the piece of equipment. Now, Kubota will give you um, financing at zero down, 0% 0 annual uh, APR, and for 60 months, and you can save up to $1,100 potentially as well. So uh, what I'm going to say now is let's go ahead and build the tractor as close as we can to, to the tractor that, that we purchased. So we're going to go into the L series here. This is between 24... 0.8 horsepower to the 62 horsepower clicking there and then it shows you the different uh, series within the L series models so I'm getting the Grand L60 and so that brings us up here um, one thing I would suggest is if you have uh, if you're thinking about running a wood chipper uh, running um, equipment off the three-point hitch that requires so much a specific amount of horsepower at the PTO this is where you want to be checking that out now I ended up going with the L6060 but with the wood uh, chipper that I got I could have gotten the 5060 or even the 4760 uh, the horsepower at the PTO is 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 really important certainly the l6060 has 62 horsepower uh, you know that's that's basically off the engine but it's only 53 horsepower for off the pto then once you select that we'll go down to the next one there isn't a two-wheel drive option this is a four-wheel drive it is a hydrostatic uh, transmission uh, and there are differences in the types of hydrostatic so uh, with the Case 995, that was a gear select. There were um, multiple ranges of two different gear shifters. So, uh, you know, three speeds forward, one speed reverse, and then four different ranges of each one of those gears. So there's like 16 different speeds, uh, 12 forward and four reverse. That was state of the art back in the 70s, and it was fantastic. The, and so I'll make another video to go over the various different types of transmissions because the uh, the B2601 Mini Me has a different type of hydrostatic transmission than this Grand L6060 does. So uh, it also has a factory installed cab. Now we live in Oswego, New York. Uh, we live in a high snow area. This season has been very nice. The last couple of seasons have been very nice, easy on us. It's snowing out there now. Not too much right now. Um, but, uh, you know, if you're going to be spending a lot of time inside of a cab, whether it's in the heat of the summer and you want air conditioning or you want to keep the bugs out of your face and mouth, if you want to keep, uh, keep the cab nice and warm, Getting a factory um, installed cab is definitely well worth it. This cab for this L6060 uh, is absolutely uh, what worth every penny that, that the additional cost was. Uh, the, the visibility, the, uh, sound, uh, the, the sound deadening qualities of it, the, uh, the air movement, the space that I have, it really is a deluxe setup so I really do recommend getting a factory installed cab no matter which manufacturer you go with as opposed to getting an aftermarket one which I had with the Mahindra which was far superior to not having a cab but this is a whole different grade up uh, step up so now we're going to select our options the tires, I got the R4 ones. Uh, the R4 are, uh, uh, you know, they aren't the turf tires and they aren't the agricultural tires. Agricultural tires would tear things up a bit more. They aren't quite as wide. Uh, the turf tires are probably, if you're going to have a mower on it, you may want to have those. The R4 is just, you know, it's probably the most well um uh, the most selected type of tire now are other than like more specialty R14s and they're great as well. Now I did not get these tires loaded with uh, with a uh, antifreeze you know like a calcium solution in it and I didn't get the wheel weights in this one. I want the ability to be able to remove the weight at different times so I'm not sinking in in different areas of our property when I'm driving around. So I have a rear ballast and we'll be going over that in a moment. <clears throat> 
next is um, valve kits and all. So I'm going to select the plus two and, and so what I I may in hindsight have wanted uh, three different additional hydraulics. So inside of the cab you have hydraulics that you can add on that can that can give you hydraulic control over uh, implements attached to your three-point hitch. And I foresee myself potentially using this. So I had two position valves, uh, uh, two different valves put on, added on as well. There is a, uh, a draw bar, uh, a drop down draw bar. It's a big heavy duty one on, on this tractor. And I think that's it as far as the hydraulics for this system. Now we'll go down to the front end loader. Has, and it does have, all right, so I'm gonna, there are these little uh, areas that you can put your mouse cursor over and it'll tell you a little bit about the feature that uh, that is here and it'll tell you what its requirements are and all this is a front end loader now they could Kubota could really do a much better job because some of these attachments it isn't absolutely clear to someone like myself uh, what that attachment is what the requirements are it'd be great if there was a little video that you could click on there or at least some pictures or more um, just you know just more information than what we see with some of the attachments so now you can see the uh, the price on the right hand side suggested retail price is fifty seven thousand eight hundred and forty five dollars you can see the attachments listed down below so uh, now we go to loader attachments if you got the front end loader and and um, I'm getting the round heavy duty bucket um, the L2296 and uh, the thing about the, the 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 reason why I like the one it has a bolt-on uh, spot for a cutting edge which we'll be selecting in a moment but another thing about the uh, the round bucket is in my experience the smoother round uh, curvature if you have moist material dirt clay um, you know uh, you know different materials that get in it compost it can stick in the bucket uh, and it sticks more if there's acute angles that that the material can sit into the more curved the surface the more the material tends to slide out at least that's been my experience as well uh, we'll go down to some loader accessories now I did get the third function kit for the, the tractor so that when I take the bucket off and I hook onto the grapple that we bought for the B2601 I can just go over there hook onto that unit as well uh, there are uh, third function couplers um, quick hose and all I'm not sure I may have added the uh, this coupler hose system I don't think that that is on my tractor but this is a place where there a more of a description would be helpful um, hydraulic spill guard uh, I believe that that's when you're lifting your bucket so it doesn't come and, and the material fall back on you there's a little bit of a, a hydraulic override with that uh, there is the bolt-on cutting edge that I did get for the um, for the bucket uh, front quick hitch implements uh, so you can get the different uh, attachments that go with this this big part so this is probably one of the most expensive attachments or additions that I got on on the tractor and this is the auto hitch so you see right now before I click on it it's sixty thousand three hundred fifty dollars when I add the auto hitch it goes up to seventy thousand eight hundred and seventy four dollars uh, the reason that I got the auto hitch, and this is the auto hitch that comes from your uh, mid-mount PTO shaft, which we still have to select yet, and that uh, advances the uh, a quick attachable front end attachment that can at attach to a snowblower, a sweeper, a, an angle blade, a flail mower, all of these attachments. But the thing about these auto hitch units are that you can sit in the cab, 
you can uh, drop off um, let's say I have the snowblower it's just hitting a couple of buttons it drops it off I don't have to get out and move and remove pins disconnect wiring disconnect hydraulics at all it all does it automatically from the comfort of your cab and you can just drive over and pick up your angle blade or you can pick up your flail mower or whatever it is or you can just drop it off and go and do other work uh, with your equipment so I think that this will pay off for me I'm I'm getting older and I've hurt my back in the past I don't want to be struggling especially when it's freezing outside uh, attaching and reattaching things this auto hitch coupler there's really just uh, four pins two on each side that that go that attach it to hook it up and your drive shaft and it goes into your draw bar into the back of the equipment and I'll be making videos about that this summer when I disconnect it there are special grill guards and there is a ground pressure relief uh, valve uh, I'm not positive if I got that or not um, so I'm not going to add it to the price it may already be added in to what I had gotten I did not get a backhoe uh, and let's see the quick hit, hitch couplers and all so these are buckets for the uh, backhoe so I didn't get those you could instead of getting the um, uh, the quick hitch attach buckets so it can so you can switch different buckets switch to a grappler uh, switch to pallet forks and so on and so forth uh, you could have selected less expensive getting uh, pin on buckets and the same thing with the uh, with the backhoe uh, mowers I did not purchase a mower with this I have a zero turn Kubota mower and uh, and a Dixie chopper zero turn mower as well weights what I selected uh, for this was the ballast box and the reason that I sell because the cost of getting the additional wheel weights and then having to take them on and and uh, and uh, put them on and take them off seemed to be more of a hassle I didn't want the uh, the fluid filled uh, rear tires I've had those in the past and I've had leaks in the past and it I don't want that contamination in the environment as well and it's a real hassle if I've got to go ahead and take off a, a rear wheel that's fully loaded to load that load that up and bring it to the service uh, usually the service people will come to your property they start charging you from the moment that they leave their shop <laughs> and they until the time that they get back to their shop no matter what what happens and all so I decided to go with a ballast box I can adjust the weights with that I can easily quickly detach it and put on a box blade a um, you know any implement a flail mower whatever I want on the back of the tractor uh, as well rakes and all so I only went with the ballast box for myself everyone's got to decide what functions they want as well um, I have the rear wiper kit the the defogger this will automatically add a, uh, a more powerful a higher amp um, alternator to control all these I did not get the uh, the work lights with this uh, did I get the side I don't think I got the side window defogger um, but there is the attachment for me to hook hook those things up I did buy an aftermarket radio and I have light bars to put on it as well and I bought a backup camera as well but I absolutely love the rear view mirrors uh, the side mirrors that come with this tractor <clears throat> excuse me um, other so I did have to get the mid mount PTO kit that so it can hook on to the uh, to the undercarriage that hooks to the foul mowers the snow blowers and so on and with this snow blower it automatic it, it it by default comes with the deflector and the shoot turning apparatus as well all hydraulically driven um, let's see the snow blower we get down so the snow blower that I got is a 74 inch uh, commercial snowblower the L4474 and again now you can see it really brings that price up another significant amount as well and you don't need a shoot rotator you don't need a deflector they're all included in in that system um, and you could get a different cutting edge for this as well 
you could get um, this L4476, a 72 inch front blade. Uh, that's an angle blade up and down and side to side uh, like a dozer blade. What would that add? Uh, like another four thousand dollars it looks like um, so and you could get the broom attachment with it as well and I know that you can get a um, and the broom would be for if you're out there cleaning uh, if you're in other parts of the country where you don't get as much snow as we get clean sidewalks you might actually put the broom on the B2601 for cleaning sidewalks and this one you do this for cleaning um, cleaning uh, your driveways and all. So that's all of the attachments here. Now choose extended warranty. I did not select an extended warranty. And step four. So here we are. Um, the base price uh, including tires is $50,412. Selected attachments is $33,875. You can go back and and undo things. The factory assembled cab, $105 for, for factory assembling it. And uh, I elected to go with the 60 month zero, zero down, 0% uh, interest. And so that means that I had basically $1, $1,100 off of the suggested manufacturer's retail price. So that would get you at this point around. Um, eighty-three thousand two hundred and ninety two dollars uh, so now there were there are other attachments that weren't priced into this deal that I got but like uh, other attachments for the B2601 mini me so we got a, a, a beautiful flail mower a, um, a grapple um, ballast box for that so those weren't included in in the in the price that I paid for this so this one would have cost me eighty three thousand two hundred and ninety two dollars at this point and I ended up paying with all the additional uh, things that I'd gotten on it was sixty six thousand nine hundred and nineteen dollars so almost sixty seven thousand uh, dollars so it was uh, it was advantageous of me to get to the get to the a, a good honest dealership and uh, secure the price that I got when I did uh, secure it uh, but in summary the things that I would say uh, uh, it, number one always start what by listing the functions the multiple functions that you can possibly foresee the piece of equipment doing the unique circumstances now this tractor we ended up buying the B2601 which is a not the subcompact one but a compact tractor and you pr may have seen videos of myself or Thea driving that that one has the uh, the grapple on it it has a canopy on it doesn't have the enclosed cab I don't see that being out there snow blowing doing heavy duty work with with that piece of equipment but that has a much smaller tur turning radius. That has a place where we can get in between the different trees in the food forest. Uh, it, it can handle pallet forks. It can handle the grapple, uh, big heavy equipment. It can handle uh, front mounted equipment. You could use a snowblower, I mean a, a lawnmower on it as well. So with these two pieces of equipment, we can, we can meet all of the functions that we could foresee. The Mini-Me, the B2601, doesn't have enough horsepower to run the wood chipper that we're going to be uh, running out back. And we, we had that delivered. I haven't used it yet because we didn't get the L6060 in time. So we need the higher horsepower to run the wood chipper that I can take large pieces of material and chip it down in size. So again, the first thing I would say is make a list of everything that you think you wanted to do. Watch YouTube videos, see what people are, are using in their equipment. Uh, would it be advantageous to have a, a dump trailer that, that 
pulls behind it? Would it be advantageous to have a mower on the on the base of it? And then when you think about all these pieces of equipment, what are the limitations? The decreased ground, ground clearance of having a mower in the belly of the tractor. Um, you know, uh, I, you know, far too often we can look at just the horsepower or the the, the load handling of the front end of the tractor. Uh, and that could be um, potentially a, not a great purchase. I'll give you an example. A friend of mine who runs a very large uh, facility, uh, she got a grant to go on out and buy a new tractor. And she went to one of the, the tractor places that I mentioned that I didn't want to go to. Uh, they. Uh, she told them what she needed the tractor for. They sent her home with a smaller compact tractor than what would meet her needs. It wouldn't be able to lift the loads that she needed to lift. It wouldn't be able to dump them into a, into a trailer. Uh, so it did, wasn't a good fit. So she ended up going back and saying, look, I want a different one, uh, a different tractor. And she has areas that, that really need, the, the grounds, a lot of people are coming there, so the grounds really need to be maintained well. And they gave her ag tires on it. Uh, they did not, they gave her a, a good size front end loader, but no ballast weights, no uh, filled rear wheels, no uh, uh, wheel weights. None of those things were even discussed with her. And so a dealership really should help to educate you through the entire process to say, I just want to make, make sure you're aware of this. Like, for example, when I'd go there, not only did, did, did they, were they using ag tires on, on this tractor with a nice big heavy front end loader, um, it's, it, it's an L series tractor, and the ROPS, the rollover protection was down, and they didn't have weights on it, and, there are, and they have some hilly areas. It's really a recipe for, for an accident happening. And there wasn't just one person operating the tractor. So I had a really heart-to-heart -heart talk with them and saying, geez, those ROPS have got to be up when you're doing the loader work. You need ballast weight on, uh, in the vehicle. And, you know, they just never communicated these things with, with her. So having a good relationship with a dealership so that you're, they're offering tips and bits of information on, on what you should and shouldn't be considering when you're picking up a piece of equipment is, very, is, is extremely important. So finding a really good dealership after knowing all of the functions you want the tractor to do or whatever piece of equipment and making sure it's right for your property. If you're going to be moving in and buying a piece of wilderness and it's on a hillside, then maybe not a four-wheel drive tractor is the best thing. You may want to get a track loader uh, to do the initial clearing and doing the work. Uh, in some cases, an excavator might be the, yeah, be the first piece of, uh, piece of equipment to acquire. Or it may be that you want to set up so you can rent different pieces of equipment, rent an excavator and a track loader to accomplish certain uh, feats and then invest in a four-wheel drive uh, compact tractor to do all the regular maintenance. It's the, the topography of the land that you're on, the goals of what you want to do with that land, and all of the functions and the limitations of each additional feature that goes on the tractor to be thinking about. So those are my thoughts about tractors and all. Feel free. I'm, there's tons of things I didn't, didn't list here below. Um, and I know there's people who absolutely love, um, you know, John Deere tractors. It's, uh, you know, there's like these two wars between the orange and the green. Uh, you know, I'm happy to talk about that at some point if people are interested in my two cents on that. Uh, but I think whoever you go with, stay with it, with, stay with whatever implements there are with it. And, uh, and, and I think that's absolutely fine. You know, and, and I'm not trying to, um, uh, forget Massey Ferguson and, or, or the, uh, um, the other orange tractor, Coyote, I'm, it's not Coyote, but Coyote, uh, I think, or Mahindra. 
And you've heard me talk in the past about some of my issues with Mahindra as well. So that's it for today's uh, video, folks. If you found this a video, please give us a thumbs up. Feel free to uh, add to the discussion down below your, your thoughts on purchasing tractors and all. Anything that I left out as well. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye now.